Imagine your story. A reading and adventure camp. Today's camp is brought to you by Think TV, the Dayton Metro Library, and PBS Kids. Hi campers, it's Riley here. Today we have another really fun day of camp plan for you. Hi everyone, it's Shaveen. Today is going to be all about bugs and other creatures. Hey there, it's JT, and today I'm gonna to take you to the library to read a really cool book. Hi, it's Kelsey, and since today is all about the outdoors, we're going to take you on a virtual field trip with a naturalist to the Five Rivers Metro Parks. The four of us are gonna be your counselors for this week. We are still staying safe at home, but you're gonna love what we have planned for you. Since this is a reading and adventure camp, we always start out at the Dayton Metro Library. JT, are we going to see Mrs. Winnie? We sure are. You know, Miss Winnie is my favorite librarian for reading us storybooks. And she's going to show us a part of the library that's really fun in the summer. Hi, Miss Winnie. Hi, friends. Guess where I'm at? Right now, I am outside at the Children's Outdoor Terrace at the Dayton Metro Library at the main branch. I hear you're about to go on a special field trip where you're going to discover the world of nature. And while you're busy doing that, I'm just going to stay out here and sing and dance, and I'll see you later with a special story. Bye! <laughs> Okay, today we're going outdoors for our field trip. Have you ever visited any of the Five Rivers Metro Parks? There are gardens and rivers and parks and hiking trails all over our region. And today we're doing one of my favorite things, which is going exploring in a creek. And Erin Rowcamp is a naturalist and she's waiting there for us now. Are you guys ready for Sky Drone? Then let's go! Okay, ready for liftoff. Today, Sky Drone is taking us to the Germantown Metro Park, which is one of my favorites. This is so cool. Have you ever gone hiking here? They have some amazing trails. Nice job, Sky Drone. One of my favorite places to explore rocks is in the creek, and I just came up on this rock right here. So let's go take a look at it. When you come up to the rock, you want to remember that this could be a creature's home, so you want to be respectful to those creatures. And when you lift up the rock, you know, what's underneath might startle you, or you could even startle them. Um, so when you lift up the rock, you want to lift the rock towards you. And if it would be something larger, like maybe a snake, you have a nice barrier between you so the creature can't get towards you. Um, oh look, there's a little crawdad under this rock. So this is a crawdad, some people call them crayfish, and this is just a baby. So he's very small and he has very tiny pinchers. Um, the adults will have larger pinchers, and so they can look a little bit more scary to people at times. Um, but really, these creatures will be much more afraid of you because you're much larger than them. Um, and these pinchers actually have a lot of uses for them. They use them to hold on to rocks and to also catch and eat their food. So we're gonna go ahead and put this crawl dad back. And to do so, we wanna again, be respectful of these creatures home. So there still could be some creatures down here or on our rock. So we wanna put it down very gently. And after we put down our rock, we can put our crawl dad right next to it so we don't accidentally squish it. When I got to the creek today, there was already two girls out exploring and flipping over rocks looking for creatures. And they found some really neat creatures and are willing to let me share them with you. One of the creatures that they found is a salamander. And this is a baby salamander. If you look closely, you might be able to see its gills. It also has tiny little beady eyes and little tiny toes. And this salamander, if you go to explore salamanders, you want to be careful because they have bones just like you and me that you could accidentally break if you're not being careful. They also might feel a little bit slimy to you and that's how they keep themselves from getting sick. So salamanders can get sick just like you and I can get sick, but if you wet your hands before touching them, you can help keep them from getting sick. Salamanders can come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. I wonder what kind of salamanders you can find near you. 
Spiders are another creature that are also common under rocks. Um, when you first see a spider, some people might be afraid, but these spiders are actually very docile and gentle, as you can see here with this spider. Um, when you find a spider, though, you don't want to grab it. Um, you want the spider to control the experience and decide. So if it wants to climb onto you like this spider, that's okay, but you don't want to go and grab it. Um, there's lots of different types of spiders, too, that you may see. So like our salamanders, they come in different colors and shapes and sizes. They also are very different sometimes in the way that they hunt and what they eat. So if you see a spider, it can also be really neat to watch them for a while and observe how they're hunting. Now, next time that you're on a hike or even exploring your backyard, and you see a rock, you might be curious what creature calls it home. When exploring, remember to be respectful and always put the rock back where you found it. Thank you for exploring. That was really cool. Say, before we got together today, I asked each of you, what's your favorite insect? What'd you guys come up with? Well, sometimes in our backyard, I see a white admiral butterfly. I have a picture right here. You can find them throughout a lot of Ohio. I love the iridescent blue markings. They sort of glow. Wow, that's beautiful. I chose the ladybug. Isn't it cute? It's really a type of beetle, but farmers like them because they eat a lot of insects that damage crops. I like them when they land on my finger and then fly away. And some people all around the world actually consider them lucky. My favorite insect is also a type of beetle. I really love fireflies. Here's a picture of one. They look pretty ordinary during the day, but at night, they light up. When you get a lot of them together, it's pretty magical. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about the summertime, seeing the fireflies. So, JT, what's your favorite insect? That's easy, the honeybee. I love honey. But I also like bees because they're amazing teamwork. That's how they're able to produce so much honey. If you're in a garden, it's really fun to watch the bees flying around the flowers and collecting pollen. Say, JT, do you know why bees are so sticky? Nope. Because they use honeycombs. <laughs> <laughs> so campers, what's your favorite insect? You can even draw a picture of one and we'll post our favorite ones. See, I drew a picture of a ladybug. Okay, this makes me want to learn more about insects. JT, I'll bet there'll be a lot of books at the library. There sure are. Miss Winnie has another book picked out for us. Let's go see. Hang on, here we go. This is amazing. I love this. Here we are already. Thanks, Sky Drone. Hi, JT. Hi, friends. I'm outside, and I'm going to read a beautiful story. A beautiful, magnificent story called A Stone Sat Still, written and illustrated by Brendan Winslow. A stone sat still with the water, grass, and dirt. And it was as it was where it was in the world. And the stone was dark. And the stone was bright. And the stone was loud. And the stone was quiet. And it sat where it sat, with the water, grass, and dirt. And it was as it was, where it was in the world. And the stone was rough, and the stone was smooth, and the stone was green, red, purple, and blue. And the stone was a pebble. And the stone was a hill. And the stone was a field. 
and the stone was a smell. And it sat where it sat, with the water, grass, and dirt. And it was as it was, where it was in the world. And the stone was the wild, and the stone was a home. And the stone was a kitchen, and the stone was a throne. And the stone was a marker, and a map, and a maze. A danger, a haven, a story, a stage. And the stone was a blink, and the stone was an age. And the stone was an island, and the stone was a wave, a beautiful wave. And the stone was a memory. And the stone was always. Have you ever known such a place where with water, grass, and dirt, a stone sits still in the world? A stone sat still. You sit still for a moment and you listen and imagine. Can you imagine your story? Bye. So, what did you guys think about the book? I loved it. It makes me want to go sit outside and be in nature, even if it's just in my backyard. Yeah, I've been spending a lot of time outside. My mom loves to garden, so sometimes I help her out with that. You won't believe what she gets excited about. Worms. Maybe they're not an insect, but she says they're really great for the soil. That's what my neighbor says, but worms aren't really my thing. Hey, I know worms are important, but you know what else is really cool? All the crazy ways that insects see, eat, and move around. I have a video. Let's check it out. Insects play a vital role in the world's ecosystems. They pollinate crops, provide food for a wide variety of animals. They give us silk, honey, medicines, or even just good to eat. Scientists have identified about a million different species of insects, and they're still finding many new ones. Etymology is the branch of science devoted to the study of insects. And by understanding insects, we can learn a whole lot more about our world. This video has a lot more information about insects. You can watch it on our website. Hi, I'm Maya. Today, we're making ants on a log. Now, we're not actually making ants on a log. We're making a fun and easy snack. To make ants on a log, you will need celery, peanut butter, and raisins. Some other items that can be used as substitutes are bananas, cream cheese, if anyone's allergic to peanut butter, and chocolate chips, if anyone's allergic to raisins. I think I'm allergic to raisins. <laughs> Today, I have an assistant to help me. This is my little sister, Jada. Say hi. Hi. First, you're going to wash your celery so it's nice and clean. Then, you're gonna take your spoon or knife, here Jada, take some peanut butter, oh my goodness, okay that's good. Now, you're going to take your celery and put the peanut butter on it, like this. Like this? Yeah! <gasps> wow, Jada! This will be our log. Perfect. Now, you're gonna put your ants on the log. Okay, Jada, you wanna use chocolate or raisins? Come on, which one, this one or that one? That one. Okay. Okay, so put the chocolate on the celery. Put the chocolate on there. Here, okay. help. There are many ways to make them. And that's all there is to it. You wanna bite, Jada? Yeah. Okay, go bite. <laughs> <laughs> 
You like that? Here, chocolate. <laughs> okay, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Jada, say bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Hey guys, we're coming to the end of our camp today, so that means it's time for a song. Our music counselor, Mr. Mark, has one with a fun story behind it. You can sing along. Hey kids, it's Mr. Mark again. Today, we're going to sing a song about pawpaws. Now, I didn't realize the pawpaw was a real thing, but it turns out it's a fruit, and it's delicious, and it grows all over Ohio and the eastern part of the United States in shady places, especially near rivers. They have a pawpaw festival around here. I think I'll have to go sometime. Anyway, this is a song about the Paw Paw Patch. Where oh where is dear little Liza? Where oh where is dear little Liza? Where oh where is dear little Liza? Way down yonder, the Paw Paw Patch. Picking up Paw Paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up Paw Paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up Paw Paws, put them in your pocket. Way down yonder in the Paw Paw Patch. Come on kids, let's go find her. Come on kids, let's go find her. Come on kids, let's go find her. Way down yonder in the paw paw patch. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Way down yonder in the paw paw patch. Where oh where, dear little Liza, where oh where. Dear little Liza, where oh where is dear little Liza? Way down yonder in the pop pop patch. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mark. That was a fun song. Well, campers, that's all the time we have for today. Remember to keep on reading. We'll see you real soon. Bye! Bye. To stream this episode or to find out more activities and books to read, visit thinktv.org slash camp. Hey guys, I got one for you. Why was the ant so confused? I don't know, why? Because all of his uncles were ants. 